Hey at Woodlanders, this morning, plenty going on today. I've got the Hartwood team back in and also I've got to try and get some cordwood in the trailer. Uh, that's the first job. The site is still a little bit wet, so I think I'm going to just do one load today and try and hope that tomorrow is a little bit drier still. It's got some sunshine coming. This week I've got to pick up a trailer chassis and I went and bought it and went on eBay. I wish I hadn't now, but never mind. Um, so I've got to pick that up later on, all being well. See you in a moment. Things I'm trying to do, you know. <laughs> what we on film? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> You're right. You can't be on camera. So uh, a hot would do a Absolutely amazing yesterday, fantastic job. They've done loads of felling, there's still a few more to do by the look of it. I've not had a good look round yet, but they've done a massive clear up job. Um, typically stunning work. Um, so they're on about coming back next week. So, just got back from picking up the uh, trailer chassis, it's like a an axle really with a draw bar. Not quite sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I seem to be the only bidder on it, so maybe everyone else is a bit wiser than I am. Or I've got a bargain. Let's have a quick look round it, shall we? So, he wasn't sure what it was off. He thinks it might have been off a Bowser or possibly even a generator. If you are, can have a little ride on it, can't you? How's that? It's like being a wheelbarrow, wasn't it? Morning. What a stunning day. Wow. Freezing cold start this morning. It was weird because there was only a little bit of frost, but the ground was frozen solid. And I've, uh, I've been on an epic adventure with the tracks this morning. And um, yeah, hands are a little bit on the frozen side. So uh, today is extraction day. So because it's so nice, because it's the ground so dry, and the forecast rain at the end of the week, plus I've got some sails coming out, and I've got to try and get the bean poles out and we'll really just get everything out. I've got two options, I could have come in the in the van knowing that I could pretty well get it all out but I've got to bring the log trolley and then drag all that out from up there by the willows, remember that, uh, by hand and I didn't really fancy doing that or spend 45 minutes on the tractor driving here this morning so and I quite like the idea of coming out on the tractor this morning because it was just so nice so that's what we did. Uh, I held a few vehicles up all a bit impatient when you uh, hold the road up. It's a fantastic day, love tractor driving and hopefully we can get everything extracted today. Sorry about that. Today we've got mackerel, rice, Peas, carrots, cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage with a little bit splash of chilli powder on top. Oh, we have a few nuts at lunchtime as well. I'm trying to cut down on my chocolate too. Well, sugar in general, so sugar and carbs. 
for stem day. It's only every day in spring as well. And that's it. All the cordwood's out, which is, uh, I'm glad about that. A couple of little bits there, but I'm sure Jeff will help himself. There's not as much as I thought left over, but we'll see what happens when this chap comes to go and fetch the rest of this. I think I've got him four loads, which will be great if he has all of those. So I'll give you a little spin round if you like. But this is the willow area that we've mentioned many a time. And the big one up there, look. So we'll give you a little spin round and you can see a lot of brash, which I'm always disappointed by, but that's a lot of that's the oak. And just still haven't yet managed to get a use for it. I'm just investigating the idea of wood chip. Now some of this is going to have to be moved because it's on the stools. Uh, so on the hazel stools and then the hazel won't regrow. So some of this is going to have to be moved yet. Uh, but on the whole I think it might only be a couple of piles. <laughs> uh, I've got done what I wanted to. And you always aim for a little bit more but... What I was hoping for was to take a trailer full of bean poles home and empty this out in the yard, but I've got to deliver this this week, so that's why I'm thinking, you know what, I'm just going to leave it in. Make do without the trailer. Tomorrow's a training day with the Hartwood group over at Nether Hallwood, and so I'll take you along for that one. And uh, that's about it for today. We'll just do a bit, perhaps a bit of time lapse on the way home. So I'm out at Nether Hallwood this morning. Some people who want to learn a little bit more about coppicing and why we do it, how we do it. And so they can take away that basic knowledge then to use. So we've got some from an allotment group, some from Hartwood group itself. Uh, another chat from Culloughton where they manage some woodland as volunteers. This is Kevin. I've talked a lot about Kevin, but <laughs> he's uh, chairman of Hartwood Woodfield Community I am, Group. Yeah. I've been interviewed by Ted as well this morning, explaining coppicing. So that will go out to, do you know where he puts that? Uh, no, he hasn't, he hasn't published it yet, but it's part of our record of what's going on at this woodland because this is uh, a woodland trust site that Hartwood are now managing. So we're trying to keep a, a seasonal diary of what's going on here. Oh, that's right. Kevin goes around with the chainsaw just to nip the stools lower because it's very difficult to get in with hand tools. So you can probably see some of the stools are a bit, a bit too iry. Right, that's it, everyone's gone. Done a good job. Got a whole load of stuff out. So there's, everyone seems to be happy. Got a fair bit of product out of it. We've um, managed to clear this area and done that. And then a bit of a gap, a bit of Gelder Rose in there. A bit of a gap. And then they just started to break into this section here, look. These have got to be cut, and then what will happen is the Hartwood group will be back in. So those hazels down there, and these ones that are just circling around, these ones that have still got to be taken back. The Hartwood group, as part of their continual management of this site, will be coming in and coppicing these before this season's out. So the Kev's got to go, and I'm going to go. See you in a bit. Oops, stop swinging your hand. Morning. <laughs> just had John come, and he's took a load of... Uh, cordwood from us which is absolutely brilliant and he's on about having all of it a gardening job this morning and possibly a little bit of brush cut this afternoon uh, so on to the next job so the weather's turned out superb this afternoon the forecast this uh, so sort of expected anyway I've got some brush cutting I've got to do at the woodland and it's getting absolutely desperate because the birds are just about to start nesting and I've got to try and get this brush cutting knocked off before the birds are starting to build the nest so Kind of critical really, um, so I'm going to get wet this afternoon and I've got this brush cutter going, I can't find my strimmer line so I've had to change the head, so it's a bit of a last minute disaster. So I'll do a bit of a time lapse and you can uh, watch me get wet. So it's a bit wet, there we go, the job done. Quick uh, review, this is an Oregon uh, shredder blade, so it's got like curvy, oops I think you're upside down there, uh, curvy ends on like that and the uh, first time I've ever used it because I've used to use Oregon Jet Fit Techni blade blades and um, and they're awesome, but this thing's absolutely mega. The only thing I don't like about blade ones are, of course, it's heavy on the clutch um, and the gearbox. So that gear, oops, that gearbox there, and the clutch that's in the top end up there, 
Uh, I find blades quite heavy in that because there's no give. When you hit a stump, it's like wing and it just throws you and it's quite it can shatter your gearbox and now i'll stop waving you back because that's not very nice uh, we've got this done so this is new a uh, new plantation last year i cut down all of the white beams because the white beams were absolutely dreadful they don't do any good here because they're like chalk soil and this is thick clay so i've gone for um a bit of thuya and another softwood i can't remember, quite remember the name of it tends to be a garden hedge species not leylandi but that sort of thing anyway i thought well i'll grow them as specimen trees in um, in a woodland because that's where the, that's their native environment and there's a few failures i'd probably say there's maybe 20 percent failures but on a hole they're doing okay uh, i'll see if we can see one down a hole here we go let's try to have a look down this one is this one still alive yes just you see that one yes this blade Pretty well choose through anything. Um, so I'll do another quick time lapse. I've just had a tank full. We'll have a quick bash in here in this larch, and hopefully you'll see a bit more time lapse to see how well it does. Well, I've had enough for this afternoon. It's not really stopped raining, and I got a vibration on the on the uh, stimmer, so something's uh, a bit loose at the top end. I think. And I know you could see just through there. We've got that little bit under the larch knocked off, it's not great. Next big one on my mind, albeit there's one behind you, brambles are starting to take over the wildflower meadow. So I'm going to have to knock that off with this so that it doesn't get any worse because there's wild rose, dog rose and bramble all in there. Because I quite like brush cutting, it's my one of my favourite things to do, brush cutting, clearance work, always loved all that sort of stuff. Uh, I think it's a sense of fulfilment knowing that you've done it at the end of the day. And what was a jungle, impenetrable drunk jungle, penetrable drunk jungle, penetrable drunk jungle, turns out something that's usable and you can access and get in. So, But I shan't clear, it's a bit like coppice work, bramble clearance. You, you do an area one year and then you leave it and you do another area another year so that you get wildlife cover. It's not about trying to turn it into a garden, it's just um, just access and trying to make woodland management a little bit easier. Thanks again for watching, I do appreciate it. I think we've got 83 subscribers now, so welcome aboard all you new subscribers. Yeah, if I don't see you tomorrow, I will see you next week on the next vlog. Have you ever lost something? Oh man, so I brush cutting yesterday and um, Try and get you out the wind a minute. Uh, couldn't find my Techni blade, which is the Oregon Techni blade thingy, strimmer line. So I got the head on, but couldn't find the blades. So I ended up having to switch it for the metal blade, which I explained in yesterday's video. Anyway, I was convinced that they were in the home at the workshop, so I went to the workshop and I scoured it everywhere in there. And then I thought perhaps under the carport, so I scoured under there. And I've just come back up the work, the the woodland again, and lo and behold, they're there. It's frustrating and yet kind of satisfying to find them. It's a very strange experience. <laughs> anyway, we are back up and running. Anyway, if you uh, if you want to stay on for a little bit of a time lapse, we'll get some brush cutting done. So it's Saturday afternoon on a on a weekend this week. Uh, trying to get this uh, bit more bramble knocked off. So I think I'm going to switch out the metal blade. I'm going to give it one tank full and see how well it does. What's happening is the little spaces inside. To stop the blade from rattling on the on the centre uh, spindle, um, the spacer is so thin it seems to drop down, and when it drops down, that means the blade shifts off the spacer ring and wobbles about. This um, Oregon, can you see any of that? It's an Oregon shredding blade. I mentioned it yesterday in the in the woodlog. Absolutely brilliant, brilliant bit of kit. But of all the things I've used, I've used flat blades, you know, the ones without those wings on. I've used them a bit before. And they're no good because in Bramble, you just get, it just gets tangled up. But because of those wings, um, blimey, it does make mincemeat of everything. It even goes through knotty, horrible grass, which I was surprised at. If it's wet, snotty grass in, let's say, May, it might struggle. It'd be worth a test. The Jet Fit, and they're like a string line that goes in a special head that's just down there uh, they're really good but they do snap and if you hit if you hit a branch or a, a small stem it pretty well snaps them off so 
but this thing just keeps going and going and going and you don't really need a lot of rev so I've noticed a, a bit a few stones so we might need to dress that edge again uh, so it does just make it wing a bit when it does that uh, but yeah it's all right anyway so I'll um, I'll just show you this a sec right so we just took those bits off and the nuts off and that so this is what causes me grief look so I've got a plastic washer to pack it out and inside you'll notice another washer there look this is to convert 25 mil ish down to 20 mil if you can get this blade with a 20 mil hill and then it fits tight on there because this is causing more the minute I hit something what happens is that washer jumps out that washer then falls away from that which means then this goes like that and then it just off goes off center and that's this one here which is a spare one this one's been a bit knocked about a bit but I think it might be a tighter fit in the in the blade so I'm going to just try that now right that's a little bit better so I put that other one on and because it was thicker and a tight fit I had to knock it in and it's a tight fit over the actual 20 mil spindle then that I think is going to be an awful lot better so we'll see how we get on with that tomorrow afternoon a bit more brush cutting this afternoon Sunday today working on a Sunday hope you don't mind too many time lapses of these brush cutting episodes let me know if you get bored all done for another day so I've been off down in that direction today and down there is a really probably the worst bit of ground on here and I don't know why there's something in this ground that's ruined the topsoil I reckon anything in this ground is the grass is so thick and tussocky that um, it's ever so difficult to get anything to grow so these oaks have been in here probably six seven years and they're, they're barely like three foot high but they are still alive there's a few failures so I think I'm going to put more hazel in this to try and get the hazel to shade out the bramble because the bramble down is terrible maybe that's half the problem when we first got the woodland underneath this larch the brambles were so high they were up into the top of the trees and I had to come in cut them off and then try and drag it all down and burn it it's time for my tea I want to go over my shoulders hurt now so uh, that wasn't a trump by the way that was just me bending down thanks ever so much for watching me this week uh, if you want to subscribe that'd be awesome I welcome your feedback in the comments section just down below so yeah see you on the next one